As I said, tonight we are going to have a fun, fun time. We are going to be talking about NPG, the 90s version of NPG. And then uh, next show we'll be doing the 2000s versions of, uh, of NPG. Uh, Morris, it, well, actually, let's just go ahead and bring Morris in. Morris, what's up, brother? What's up? Hey! hey. Morris in the house. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, we got we got somebody else too. Also, Levi's in the house. Levi's hey. in the house. <laughs> fur, 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 fur. Hey. 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 All you fine, hey. yeah, all you fine folks in the house, and uh, we have, and also tonight, Tony M will also be joining us, and Mike Scott will also be joining us as well. But we're going to be talking about tonight, like we've been doing, we've been talking about uh, the, uh, we, we were talking about Prince's bands, and we kind of did this Prince's band series. And last show, we talked about the revolution. And kind of the whole point of the show is really to talk a little bit about exactly what Prince's plan and structure was. And I, Morris, I believe it was you that said, you know, every single time that you saw him change his hairstyle, you knew something was coming. Something was coming. So, uh, and that's kind of what we're talking about tonight. We've talked a little bit about the revolution. We talked about how um, everybody is really. Um, I guess really kind of wanted to get a little bit of insight is maybe what his vision was for each one of the bands that he put, put together. And uh, so that's what we're talking about here tonight. And we're talking about tonight, we're talking about NPG. NPG. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're going to be talking about that tonight. And I am uh, honored to have all you guys in here, man. I'm telling you, Tony should, should be here in just a little bit along with Mike as well. And uh, how is everybody feeling tonight? Jeff, how you feeling? I'm feeling good. I, I got excited, man. I was just, I just been like waiting for this moment because from from so far back, you know, so far back, it's always been checking you guys out, trying to play whatever you guys are playing and messing up. <laughs> so now I get to look at you and go, <laughs> <laughs> Rob, yeah. you, were, you were out last week. Yeah, no, I'm I'm all right. I, I'm feeling I'm feeling a little violated. I, I don't know if you guys have seen oh, wait, that. Wait, so. We need to edit the show already. What's happening? <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen that SeatGeek commercial, but it really disturbs me. Uh, if you've watched any football and seen that seat where the guy's butt is like moving and it's talking at the same time, oh yeah, it's freaky. <laughs> it's like uh, it's, I keep expecting an alien to pop out. I'm sorry I asked. I really, I am so so sorry. I asked anything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm extremely excited, feeling like I'm going to feel a lot better after this. <laughs> uh, Levi, I am so glad to have you on the show. This is amazing. How are you doing, sir? Man, I am doing well. How are you? I, I, I woke up this morning. It was a great start. <laughs> yeah, that's how you have to wake up. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things going on in the world, but uh, we're still yep. here. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. And yep. uh, we get to share time with you guys. And I want to thank you guys for having us on the show. Thank you. Uh, well, it's, it's, no, the honor is absolutely all, all ours. Mr. Hayes, how are you, sir? Man, I'm cool in the gang, man. It's, it's good to see you again, <laughs> brother. And, uh, you know, just like Levi said, man, we always glad for opportunity to, share with you guys and the fans and everything, man. Uh, it's, it's been an amazing experience for, for us, man. And, uh, and certainly, you know, there's a thing with Prince. You know, Prince, you know what I'm saying? And so uh, anytime we get a chance, we can share. It's always cool. You know? Well, we appreciate you guys being on the show. So before we start to get into this NPG thing, while we're waiting for, for Tony and, and Mike, uh, I do want to take this opportunity to, uh, for you, Morris, and just to say thank you, thank you, thank yes. you for all the work that and and hard dedication that you put into Welcome to America. Yes, and, thank uh, you. And doing all the production work and getting that out, man, because this album is incredible. Uh, the box set is insane. <laughs> Absolutely. Drops, I dropped the mic. Yeah. That's a mic dropper. Everything about this it thing right here. Oh my god, we were just talking about this on the deluxe on the deluxe set here. We were just talking about how this was put together with such 
just meticulous detail, everything from just, it's, it's just insane to me how much work was put into it. Did you have any involvement in actually some of the items that were going to be, that were included in, in this deluxe set? Yeah, I, I um, man, I'm going to tell you something. The estate, uh, they didn't cut any corners with regard to like really trying to make sure that that package was like something stellar. I think they may mess around and pick up some hardware for it because I think it's just, it's an amazing package. And <coughs> now it is because they needed some photographs from the from after tour. I had tour books from those tours. And I had all the tour books from the different uh, tours. And, and I sent them uh, uh, to the folks in LA where they could, they could uh, scan those things. And, uh, but but the, but all the credit goes to the cats who, who you know, uh, Matthew and, and uh, uh, Trevor and, and and all of the cats who, who put that all together because they did a killer job on that, man. I mean, I just sent some pictures out, uh, but they put that package together, and it's just epic, man. It's epic and a few other record labels, so it's crazy. So they did a great job on it. Yeah. Uh, look, look, we got a special guest in the house. Shelby James in the house. How you doing, girl? Shelby J. What? Oh, hey, Morris, if you got a little bit more volume on your on your uh, on your voice, that'd be fantastic. I see a couple of comments in here. I want to make sure everybody okay. can hear I'm you. Always, right. I'm always low, but I got. <laughs> I have one of these super professional mics right here, but this app will not allow me to use it. So, oh, um, no, that sucks. Oh. Very super high professional. Man. It's only using the iPad microphone. So what I'll do is I'll try to pull it up a little closer and talk a little louder. I got that, you know, uh, that, that Prince rock and roll voice because, you know, when you're in, when you're in music, man, uh, after hearing so many years of music, you're like, uh, am I talking loud, man? I'm talking loud. <laughs> so it's like, I try, to not, I try to be conscious that I'm not talking loud all the time because all the rock and roll we used to hear all the time, man. It's like, oh, oh yeah, man. gosh. Yeah, I, I, I'm surprised. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that I'm not deaf because I never wore earplugs to any of the concerts that I ever went to. I just, I, I didn't start doing that until recently. Uh, but you know, when you start going to these concerts where it's everybody's just screaming, you got these boy bands and Taylor Swift, and you know, I'm taking my daughters to these things, and it's just like you're hearing everything other than the music. It's insane, right. and yeah. you have to wear earplugs. There's like no way around it for sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Did but I have to, I to speak up so I make sure everybody can hear. Oh no, <laughs> it's perfectly fine. All right, so. Uh, let, let's let's go ahead and, and break into it. We're going to keep an eye out for uh, for Tony and Mike, who will also be joining us here because we have so much information we want to go over here. We're talking about NPG, and specifically we're talking about kind of the 90s versions. There was actually three iterations of NPG in the 90s. And, um, you know, Morris, you were a big part of, of a lot of that. Levi, you were too. And it was kind of um, interesting to see ex exactly how – uh, Prince kind of had a specific vision, and the whole point of this band series is really try to tap into that vision, maybe try to figure out exactly what he was trying to communicate or what he was trying to do, and what better way to do that than to bring the band members in that actually would have a really good insight into all of those, you know, little background uh, information and pieces that, that we just simply just didn't have. And as I mentioned we talked about the revolution uh, last, you know, last week, and all of those musicians are just phenomenal. I mean, they really set a, a really, a really, really big bar. And you know, we knew some of the parts. Part of the vision was he was really trying to kind of put something together that was very, very similar to Sly and the Family Stone. Just kind mm -hmm. of put together this band that just had a lot of different looks and a lot of different vibes, and would speak to a lot of different people all at the same time. Um, but then what ended up happening, it was just, it just, then there was this period of time when he cut the revolution loose and did his own thing until late 1989, when he put together the first version, uh, of MPG that we all know, and that was unveiled in 1990. And so in this episode, we'll be talking about the NPG that existed in the nineties. And there's a lot of players in and out. We wanted to take, uh, we want to talk about the core with no disrespect whatsoever to the extra players. Um, but 
uh, you two were very, very active in that first core lineup, especially you, Levi. Levi, you, you joined in in 1991, uh, replacing Miko as the guitarist. Uh, tell me a little bit about exactly how Prince approached you and was kind of, you know, involved in this process of bringing you on board for that. Um, well, first of all, uh, you know, I was with Sheila before Prince. Right. Which, you know, um, Sheila was a very big part of uh, his whole uh, uh, Prince world, you know. And yeah. so um, I got to hang out with him a lot before I actually joined the band. Like, we, you know, we did a lot of recording in the studio, uh, some stuff like, remember the Flesh, the Flesh Project? Mm -hmm. I was on that. And, uh, yep. and then we did some, one of Sheila's, Sheila's album, um, uh, I'm getting old, man. Uh, it's got touch me on it and stuff. But anyway, we were hanging out with Prince a lot at Sunset Sound. And then we were actually on one tour with him. And, and, and actually, this is classified G14. But uh, <laughs> Jerome Benton had told me that I would be in the band probably a year before I actually was in the band. I didn't really believe him. I say, man, quit. You know what I mean? Because I was just happy <laughs> to be in, you know, any part of it, which was cool with me. But he, but it actually happened, and um, so I had a relationship with him before I was actually in the band. So it, it kind of, it didn't really come out of nowhere. That's the thing with Prince. If I, if I was gonna be really honest with you today, you know, this is the time period where I can actually get in the sky and see the whole puzzle come together. Right. Mm. You know what I mean? Because even when I was listening to uh, Welcome to America, which Mo did a, uh, we call him Mo. <laughs> he did an excellent job in assisting my brother on that record. So yeah. give it up for Mo. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I'm sure that there was moments where Morris didn't know what, okay, what are we doing? I had many moments like that. I knew we were working on great stuff but I didn't know what it would end up being. And so it's the same with the band. I'm jamming with them, but I don't, today I can say, I kind of understand everything that was kind of going on. But anyway, that's how I got in the band. I knew him a little bit before we were jamming together and then he put us in the band and then we just kind of continued the relationship. Yeah, and I, I love how you have so much insight into some of the things that you got to see behind the scenes that uh, let me let me get this straight because i heard rumor that you actually got to lay ears if that's even a term on a version of when doves cry that has a hundred piece orchestra on yeah. it you talking to me yeah yeah oh <laughs> okay true well this that story I mean, isn't quite uh, what what happened then. so let me correct it sorry y'all fans what I said was, okay. I had a very, um, what was cool is I'm sure Morris went through this too. Sometimes Prince would say, hey, come in the studio. I want you to hear something. Yeah. And, uh, and he was telling me how difficult it was to do When Doves Cry. And I'm saying, why was it so difficult? It was, I mean, there's hardly any instruments on it. Matter of fact, when you released it, I was a little mad. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where's the rest of the music? <laughs> but he explained it to me. So he, he brought me in and he, he had the engineer bring up the, the original master tapes. And when he hit the play button, there was an orchestra on it. I'm like, oh my God. Like big choir stuff and everything. And then he stopped the tape. He said, do you know how hard that was to take all of that music off and just oh. do drums and vocals? He said, but in his spirit, he knew he had to do it because that was the sound of the record. And that's the genius of Prince. That's the real story. Yeah, well, that's that's still a heck of a story. The fact that even something like that even exists in, in the ether is yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. And you did tap on, since we're since we're talking with you, we did you did tap on the flesh also. It was a project that you guys, I believe was you, Eric Leeds, and I think Sheila was there too. Um, yes. But, so you had and this was actually uh, again a precursor to to madhouse and i know that eric really wanted to see that album get released and and i imagine you feel the exact same way do you feel like uh that will ever see the light of day i mean that's such and, and i've heard a lot of the stuff on there but it's i mean 
any inside information on the possibility of that? Um, I don't know what the estate will do with that. I mean, I may, I may get hung on the cross for saying this. <laughs> the cross, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but um, you know, everything that Prince experimented with, it was for development purposes. You know, a lot of times he may have three or four versions of a song before the the actual one comes together that he feels like represents his entire vision for that song. So when we were doing the flash, it was it was a very sort of loose situation. But Morris knows too, but in Prince, there ain't really no such thing as loose. You kind of playing like you're in the studio all the time. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you're having fun, but <laughs> play it right, play something that complements what we're doing. So when we were doing it, we were just kind of jamming. And then, you know, later on, he would listen at some things and go, oh, you know what? I might use that in a film as a, you know, an underbed with some music. Or maybe I'll put it out. Maybe I won't. But everything he did wasn't, and I don't believe in his mind, like a uh, record ready to release. It was just like, hey, that's a cool idea. I'm going to come back. We're going to polish that. And then I might put it out. Right. Mm. Yeah. So and- I don't I don't know what they will do with that. Yeah, that'd be because I, I and somebody else, uh, Chester here asked. He said, uh, "What happened?" Uh, he asked, asked, asked Morris, "What happened to the Prince Sample Seven Hundred series, Morris?" I talked him out of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Possible. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a, that's the long and short of it. I talked him out of it. Now that 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 is the. I'm, Try to refresh my memories. That was the one that had a bunch of sound samples of his music and stuff that people were going to be able to buy and use in their own music. Is that what that was? Yeah, I mean, look, man, with (laughs) 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 bro, it it was so many times that that I would go in circles with Prince about this kind of stuff. I'm a I'm a geek, man. So you know that kind of stuff, samples and stuff like that. I was into that kind of stuff. I, you know, when, when I came to the situation, you know, they had been using you know, some different samplers, like these Emacs samplers and stuff. And I'm telling Prince, bro, you're using these Emacs samplers. They don't sample at 44.1. They, they, they're they like, they, they're weird. They, I got better stuff than you. I shouldn't have better stuff than you. You're a Prince, you know? And he's like, go fix it, you know? And then we had a guy, <laughs> John, that used to be, uh, you know, I believe I remember Skip. And uh, mm-hmm. Skip went and got, you know, it just basically bought my rig for me to use and updated the, the stuff. And once Prince found out what my stuff could do, you know, I'm kind of like, yeah, see, Prince, my stuff would do this and do that. <laughs> he says, oh, really? Okay, well, then you can do this and, and you can do that. And then you can do, I was like, oh, well, well, uh, well, I could be ready. I was like, no, you, you can do this, then you can do this. And I kind of made trouble for myself. And I was like, oh, snap. I, I, I guess I probably went in like that. But, you know, because Prince was always ahead of the technology. Once you kind of told him what the possibilities was, then his thing went bang, zoom. It's just like zoom. I'm on. Okay, then I can do this. So, you know, I was working with this software at the time called Bias Peak. And it was dope. It was this, this software that would, uh, it's like a two-track editor. But I could use all of these plugins to just like take a loop or take a voice or anything, apply a bunch of plugins to it. Like at the beginning of that whole game, you know, and Prince was like mm-hmm. tripping. Like I bring in stuff and I could whack it out and make it all crazy. He'd be like, man, how do you, how do you know how to do this? I just said, it's just a thing. I'm just doing a thing. And so he thought, well, okay, well, let's do these samples. But then he goes in the vault and, you know, he pulls out a lot of stuff that's like, you know, we got doves cry stuff. We got some stuff. We got vocals. We got all of this stuff. But he wanted to make a thing that was seven discs, like 100 samples per disc, 700 samples, $700. This whole kind of thing. He had the whole thing. And I said, friends, the, the thing is, that's not as cool. Because his, his explanation to me was, uh, well, it's me, Morris. I mean, I'm playing it. So if somebody was going to pay me to come in a session, it cost them way more than seven hundred dollars. I said, yeah, I, I, I get, I get mm-hmm. that, Prince. I say, but that's not how that really worked in the sample game. You get a disc, and this is old school tech now. So this was like a disc would hold like 
700 and something megs of data. All right. 700 megs. That was like, that's what a CD will hold. Yep. And so sample disk, like bigger, you know, you're talking about like bigger size stuff. People have way more samples. They had thousands of samples mm -hmm. on it. So this kind of thing. And I'm trying to tell them, you know, like Prince, I don't, I don't know if this is going to fly. The other thing I was trying to tell them is, I, I think you may have an issue with Warner Brothers about the, about this stuff because once you release these samples with doves and everything else on it, that's going to... Mm -hmm. You know that's gonna cause a problem, bro. And I, I did the work because you know I, I worked for the man. He said I want you to do this, and I did this, you know, and I did it. But I gave my two cents. I just said I'll do the work, but I'm telling you what's gonna happen in the game. Because what happens if Puffy or somebody uses one of your samples? What I mean, if that's the one that somebody grabs, and then whoever uses it first is gonna be the one that's got it, and everybody else is gonna be following them. It just would have been, you know, because it's a limited amount of data on these things. And I just said, that's not really the way to go. I was more or less like, especially as software instruments came around, like, let's make an instrument, an instrument and put mm -hmm. the sound in the instrument so that people can articulate it the way that they want to do it. You know what I'm saying? That sort of thing. But it was it was crazy. And I, and I told Londell, I said, Londell, I think Prince is going to have a problem with this, this CD. I played it for Londell. He said, oh, no, <laughs> this ain't going to roll. He's <laughs> like, we got we to talk about this, you know? Because it is going to be a problem because all of those samples would have had to be cleared by Warner Brothers uh, because he had that contract with them at the time. So, you know, it was just like, uh, I, I I just thought that it would dilute the value of, of, of those things to, to, to have that come out. And, and, and it was cool. I did a commercial. I did everything. I just did what he wanted oh. me to do. You know, I just worked for the cat. So I just did stuff. But I just, yeah, because we, we saw the, um, I, I actually saw at the end of the video that I was watching, I don't remember which video that it was, but it was like, uh, it was like some VHS and there was an ad for it at the end of the VHS that, you know, I, I don't I like, yeah, thing. Yeah, money. I did a robotic voice and everything about yeah. the, the, the dopest samples put to the laser and all this kind of stuff, you know, <laughs> we did, you know, because again, you know, that was my job. I, you know, he had me do some stuff and I remember even using that app, you know, uh, uh, Prince was like, Oh wow! I want you. You know, he had just became a Jehovah's Witness, and he wanted me to come take all the swear words out of his records. I said, Prince, I'm not doing that, man. And, and, and he said, Why not? I said, Well, because well, number one, I don't want all your fans coming after me like I'm doing something. Because that, that was kind of like if the word had kind of got out. I think he had said something about it. He's going to redo all of his stuff with the swear words out. And I said, Prince, you can't unring that bell, bro. Everybody mm -hmm. got those records. We, they're not going to turn them in and get the clean version of all of your songs. <laughs> Men and I just said, I don't, I said it's an artistic thing, bro. And I understand that you you you're a Jehovah Witness now, you, and you feel some kind of way about the material that you did. I said, but Prince, that's a growth thing from where you at now. I'm done. This is me talking to the man, you right? Know, who, I ain't got no hit records. This dude got records all over the place. But I'm just telling him <laughs> it's a journey, brother. And what you did back then was reflected where you were in life at that point. And your music moving forward from this point will reflect where you are right now. But I don't want to go and un, un, try to unring a bell of. I like those records that you did. I said I like them records, man, and I don't want to personally go in there and mess with that. That's where I drew the line. I just said I'm not going to do that. And, and you can get somebody else to do it, but I, I'm not going to. No, wow. Yeah, yeah that's. Not I don't want people coming after me and saying. Who does he? Because th I actually saw someone with somebody. Who do? Who does Mr. Hayes think he is to go changing Prince's music? I'm like, I don't do that on my own recognizance, man. I can't do nothing without him. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I can't. I can't even imagine Dirty Mind not cleaned dirty. up. Not dirty. <laughs> no, right. dirty. It's mine. <laughs> It's like, can't put out clean mind. <laughs> clean mind? Moist. Moist. Oh, man. You see the sister, sister, the distant third cousin? <laughs> wow. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do it. I, I mean, personally. It just, uh, and it's just, Prince would always move with that kind of zeal. But like when he get, became a vegetarian, he was like, everybody in the band, vegetarian. I'm like, no, it's good. Why? <laughs> I'm a meditarian. Meditarian. <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> we even had, you know, and he put in this vegetarian time magazine, you know, he was like, you know, said, yeah, my band is going to be this, they're going to be vegans and 
And I remember myself, Sonny, and Mike and Tommy, we were all like on tour in like the Netherlands at, at a Kentucky Fried Chicken in the, in the airport. <laughs> and fans rolled up on us like, look! You get your hand ate while you like in the way. So <laughs> don't touch the bucket. Kind of how he did things, man. He just had that. He moved with that zeal, and, it, and whatever he would do, he would get on it, and then everybody got to get on it. That's just kind of how you got down. But you know, you had to just stand up and say, "No, nah, I'm gonna go ahead and eat this sandwich right quick and get this." <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you pay the, you pay, go ahead and pay the fine. <laughs> oh man! Mm -hmm. a, couple yeah, of, right. you know, a couple of side notes that I, I had heard that we I, people have been asking me when they found out that you were going to be on the show is uh, the first and foremost is obviously the tour. Mm -hmm. I guess there was a lot of shows that were canceled, rescheduled, and then canceled again. What is the current like? Are the dates that are on NewPowerGeneration.net the current dates? that you are going to play or are there more changes on top of that as well? Cause I know a lot of people are asking about uh, what the touring schedule is right now. The, the, currently the dates right now, we just have, uh, you know, there, there's been a lot of movement. Of course, COVID is still crazy right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. a lot of on the dates, like uh, we, we postpone and move dates. Uh, this will be like the third time since 2019. 2019 was the last tour That's all. we went to go do. And, uh, you know, and this has been like every time we get up to it, it's like, let's see where it's at. Are they allowing a, multi, a, lot, of, a lot of people in venues? All kinds of things like that. You know, right. we were ready to do, embark on a, like a three-week bus tour. And this this, this, uh, de this uh, Delta variant is, is pretty prolific in terms of how it affects people. You got 13 people on the bus. It get, get crazy in terms of just, and you're living on the bus. And, you, and, you, and, and then you got the issues with the venues. You know, some venues have strict vaccination rules, all those mm -hmm. type of things. So we had to assess a lot of stuff moving uh, into the dates. So what is actually happening now is we got a, we got uh, two days of shows in Minneapolis at the Dakota. We have Iowa and we have Chicago, uh, city, city of Wyoming. And so that's, the, that's what's happening now. The other dates are going to be like they're going to once again move down the line, see how COVID looks. At this point, at that point, uh, so it's just a, a, a constant shifting of these 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 events and everything. So it's unfortunate, you know, we hate it for you know fans, of course, uh, but I think the the key is we want we want us, we want everybody to be safe. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Levi, are you going to be on that tour? Uh, I won't be on those first four. We had a little scheduling conflict, but Mike Scott's going to be there. And you know, he's more than capable. <laughs> I, I call him like like Don Cornelius. Mighty, my Scott. <laughs> <laughs> and I know Levi. I know that you are over in uh, the California area, and you are actively playing with uh, the Purple Ones. If I is that is that correct? Yes. So I, I put, yeah, I do some shows. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about the Purple Ones. That's a. I mean, I know we're kind of getting off topic here, but uh, this is really you know some of the stuff that people want to get out of the way and hear. Um, you know, tell me a little bit about the Purple Ones and this. You know, Prince. It's kind of like a Prince tribute band, sort of, kind of? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, nobody can be Prince. That's not the idea. Right. <laughs> you know? right. And it's like yeah. nobody should ever do that. And we don't do that. The New Power Genesis, we don't do that. Just do the, do, do the music. Let the music speak for itself. The music is the star of the show. Right. Um, it's just, uh, you know, on the West Coast, um, there hasn't been um, a lot of... Uh, Prince music represented out here. So that's how it kind of started. Um, but, you know, we, we, you know, we all want family and we're just doing our thing. That's all. Yeah. Yes, well, so, yeah. It's all throughout Cali. You guys do like a lot of shows over in California. It seems to be like the only place I'm seeing dates right now. So if anybody, any listeners, I know there's tons of them here. Uh, they're in the California area. Please make sure to go to, I think it's purpleones.com, I think is the, the website. Uh, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly, and look at those dates and come out to the show, man. That's and get and, and give Levi a hug. Well, if you're back, <laughs> give you're back, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> give me, I need one. I'll show you. I'll show you. 
<laughs> These days, I need more to tell you. We we all need a hug. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, 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 and speaking of hugs, uh, Morris, I don't know if you knew this today or maybe you did, uh, that today is the two-year anniversary of your house fire that you had. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, and uh, so, uh, you, you are, how, how's, are, are you back, are you back in, back in motion? Is everything kind of back in place? And bananas, man, that's today. That's today. That's today. That's today. Wow. I, you know, it's crazy because I, I, I don't think about a lot of stuff like that, you know, and it's funny because that, that, that's right. Uh, um, that, that's what it was. I was sitting at, uh, my 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 dude Rick Kitchen and and, and we we're all <laughs> having some food and and doing around and that whole thing happened. So you know it's kind of crazy, man, because I lost a lot of stuff, a lot of really uh, you know some cool stuff. But but the things that I did lose uh, it worked as well. You know I didn't uh, I lost some hard drives. I lost a lot of gear, a lot of gear and equipment. But you know what, man, and in, in the scheme of things. Uh, you know, I have some people say, man, that's too bad. You know, this and that happened. And, you know, maybe if he was there, uh, you could you could have, you know, put it, you could have stopped it. But what I know is this for a fact is what I do know is that maybe I could have did something. Maybe not. Maybe not. About mm -hmm. The haze, if I'd have been in there, because most people don't die from the fire itself. They die from the asphyxiation, uh, smoke, smoke right. asphyxiation uh, in fires. And it happened almost at midnight. I could have been asleep and just been choked out and never even knew it was a fire. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Mm. Right. All things considered, brother, uh, it's all good. And I'm going to tell you something, man. The fans came out in, in a bananas kind of way and just, you know, raised all of that money thanks to Tony and his wife, man. And uh, it, it, it was, it was, and I don't even know what to say because people stepped up in such a way and, uh, and a lot of gear I was able to kind of put back some things and, you know, I don't think I'll get back to the point where where it was, uh, and maybe I don't need to. You know, because a lot of times man, I had so much stuff that I collected over the years, man. I, I I used to like set up people's studio. Like I had so much stuff. I'd give people. They said I don't have a mic. I'd just take a mic out of my thing and hook them up with mic or whatever, a computer or whatever. You know, that's what I've done. And so it, this is just that whole thing of you know you, you cast bread out on the water, man, and people come back for you. And I saw that after this fire i saw the fans rally for me and what's crazy is that it had been in storage in la for like two years like oh, in storage. wow and i had brought it to this all it's starting to archive everything i had everything set up in rooms and boxes like i did it wasn't insured i was going to get the insurance after i had everything like okay here's the uh, uh the inventory and i'm going to do this and i'm going to go down the state farm or whoever and i'm going to go down and get some insurance. And guess what? Nah. -uh. And I wow. never had a situation like that where I got something. It was, it was crazy. I had a flood one time and, and lost some stuff, but nothing of, of this level. And so absolutely, Miss Susie Queen, things can be replaced. And so I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to the fans. And every chance I get to say thank you and much obliged for everything that uh, everybody did for me, man. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you brought it up. It's, it's cool. I still got studio stuff. We still cranking out these jams. Y'all about to check out some stuff from the industry <laughs> that I'm using on some of the gear that you all, that you all helped me to get. So I'm grateful for that. Well, that's fantastic, man. Yeah. That's good to hear. And, and so one more note too. I know we had a couple people asking about this new album that we've been teased about for a little while. Uh, so let's <laughs> <laughs> got their face and all like. <laughs> <laughs> Just for a, mom, a momentary minuto. I mean, uh, just uh, it, it, uh, the, from what we heard, the, you guys, uh, matter of fact, last time you were in Atlanta, you played the single, and I can't remember what the name of that single was. Um, Funk. Yes, Funk, I mean, it was so fantastic. I was like, oh, this is going to be amazing. And uh, any updates on the album? Well, we went to L.A. In, uh, in June, back in June. Mm hmm Levi can talk about it as well, because Levi, man, this dude came came to L.A. with a sack full of goodies, like Santa Claus. <laughs> and, and, uh, brother, let me tell you something. Uh, it's hard to satisfy a lot of different cats that's got different ears and different things, but, but right. everything we came in with on this thing, we all was happy. You know what I'm saying? The management was happy. The band was happy. All of us was like, woo, woo, woo. Because to me, 
Uh, I, I don't, I don't personally, uh, I don't worry about the whole time thing as far as uh, we got, we got to put it out. Like, I don't like to get in the fray and throw something out just, just so we can say we just put something out and just got in there. You know, I read a come with some heat, something because I don't care what nobody says. At the end of the day, this band and anybody who puts out anything with regard to Prince will always be compared to Prince. We know. Right. We're not going to ever be Prince. We, we already have accepted that. We already know that. But what we do want to do is do the best that we can possibly do uh, with, with what we have learned from a master. And so, you know, a lot of, you know, figuring out what you want to do in a situation that like this is like, what, what, how do you want, what are, what are we at this point? And, 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 and what the key was, you know, we got a great singer in Mac. You know, uh, Mac mm -hmm. McKenzie, man. Oh my God. He, he's super. Yeah. You know, he's got a great feel. Unreal. And what I love about Mac is, is, you know, he don't try to be Prince. He's got his own thing, but he's inter he, his interpretation of the music is dope, you know, and, and, and he's got a great, you know, writer's kind of mind. So we just turn him loose and let him do his thing, man. And, and the stuff we've been coming up, I, I'm digging it, man. I, you know, I, it, I'm real happy with what we're coming with so far. I think we got a couple more joints that we just, I think, to, 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 to nail it down. And I think it's a thank you, good night situation. But but it's it's important for me, I know, and I think for the rest of us to make sure that what we do is quality. So that so that it, I always think of things like if if what if Prince was here, would he come in and say, I got to get a piece of that. I got to get a, a piece of jam. I, I got to get right. in on it. That's what I always think about. It. Right. And if it ain't, if I feel like mm, I don't know if he would want to mess with that, then we're not there yet. You know. Yeah, it's it's well, I know I know everybody here is looking forward to it. I mean, we you know, those those Prince comparisons are always going to happen just because of the fact that you were underneath that umbrella for such a long period of time, right. and, and, right. and it just is what it is. But I think more more so than anything, just people want to hear that Minneapolis sound. People want to hear that, but. But there was something different with Funkified. It still had that Minneapolis sound, but it was also very much MPG. It was MPG yeah. fully. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm, we're all looking forward to it. Just know we'll wait for as long as you need us to wait. Uh, but we're all ready for it. So I mean, if we got a nudge, let us know. But we'll wait. But, hey, this, we, we, we went to LA, man. We were there for like three weeks, and we really knocked out a lot of stuff. And, you know, we're in the kind of post-production uh, uh, stages of, of, you know, like kind of where we're at with it. And I think, you know, the thing is probably, you know, we got some discussion to have about, you know, delivery mechanisms and things like that and, and the business end of things, you mm -hmm. know, because it's a very complex situation, you know, uh, being a, you know, a band of princes, there's the estate, there's a lot of things that's involved in the, in the uh, uh, sausage making process in order to do something like this that you have to, we just can't willy nilly go do stuff. We have to have protocol. We have to just, everything has to go through proper channels and things. Yeah. Like that. So there's just a lot of things like that that we have to keep across the keys and dot our eyes and all the time. Yeah, no, I, and I, I don't, yeah, I, I absolutely don't don't blame you for wanting to make sure that you put out a good quality project, uh, product. Right. So, guess who's here, folks? Uh, Mr. Mike Scott is also here. Mike Scott! Uh, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> What's up? What's up? Hey, hey, y'all, look, look, I'm over here chasing chickens around, chasing six year olds. My cat was unplugged. Cat was unplugging the, the the phone cord every time, I'm trying to plug in the phone cord. Hey, welcome, to, welcome, welcome to life. In my life, how's everybody doing? Good. We got awesome. And Tony's here too. Uh, all I see is the background. Tony, I'm about to pull you on. Uh, he's got a background on here. Tony, I'm gonna. I'll, uh, you should be in bed. Fair, fair, fair. What's good? What's good, people? How y'all doing? Oh, yeah. Let's go. Oh, awesome. uh, he didn't even. He didn't want to do his hair. Look at this. He's a Hey, that's the infamous uh, Peter Loader photo right there, man. <laughs> Baby, give me a minute. Go finish. That's a great shot, too. That's a good picture, though. I yeah, like it. a fantastic photo. That, that's better, that's better yeah, than looking is. at my mark. So we're going to roll with that. <laughs> so, Mike, how you doing, brother? 
Hey, man, I'm happy to be here. Uh, every day <laughs> is every new day is a blessing these days. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, right up. yeah that's ex that's exactly what, <laughs> what I said. Uh, <laughs> every day above dirt is a good day. Every yeah, day is a good dirt. day. It's a hey. good day. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, so we wanted to uh, actually let's let's do this, Mike. Why don't you uh, pick uh, Mike? Do me a favor and pick a letter of the alphabet, just any letter. I'm gonna go with H. All right, why? I'm gonna go with H. Why? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so here's what I'm gonna do. I actually have uh, a, a collector's Ooh. a collector's Prince magazine here. Rob, can you scour the chat room and find somebody's name that starts with H? And uh, we're gonna get them hooked up with this magazine right here, Prince in 1984, a new collector's edition. So we're gonna do that first, and then uh, so. Just find somebody and get it over to me, and we'll take care of it. We're also going to be giving away a brand new sealed cream, also tonight as well. And we'll all do right, it. all right. Not see, oh, wow. see, Mike Scott brings gifts. Don't even know it. <laughs> Just come bring a gift. I'm like, I'm like a black Santa Claus over here. <laughs> oh lord! No, 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 no. Mike Scott's building his own damn house. I'm like, he, yeah. what? Wait. Bob Vila and shit, you know? Yeah, wow. yeah, me. Are you, yeah, are me you, and, you, we, we got we got to hear this story now. Yeah. Well, uh, wife and I have been we've been flipping houses for quite a few years, and uh, we uh, move around a lot. We have, in several states. We've been flipping houses in Jersey, Florida, Michigan, Georgia. And we never really had a place to call forever home. So uh, she found us eight acres here in Georgia and uh, we are building a house. I'm sitting on our RV right now because uh, we are seriously about to go down to some serious construction. I just got the electricity on, uh, put up a power pole um, and we're about to build our forever home. Wow, what city? Uh, we're in Georgia in... Um, well, wow, my blunt, my mind's Douglasville. Douglasville. Oh, okay. We've only okay. been here. We only been here for three weeks, so my mind went blank. So make sure that you <laughs> get your housewarming party. I'm out of Lawrenceville. We're not too far from you. Yeah, what's going on? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think I'm. Yeah. Yes. Jeff, Jeff is too. Jeff's out of Atlanta. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's beautiful over here. I I went to play oh, yeah. at a uh, Hillsong um, Church Ministries uh, Sunday nice. in Atlanta. That was amazing. Yeah. Um, yes. And yeah, and it's it's beautiful here. Um, Douglasville is a beautiful little city, little town. Yeah, absolutely. it's actually a big yeah. big city. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, you yeah. these houses, and you don't have an HGTV series yet. Oh uh, man, look, we don't <laughs> we don't have a house yet. <laughs> the the, the, chi the chickens are loving. The chickens are running around free range, happy. My two pit bulls are happy. Got a cat here, and my six year old. So. Uh, yeah, it's it's. I'm loving all the trees. Looks like a national park here. I sent Tony some pictures. Uh, pretty cool. Well, you're pretty definitely cool. living in a slice of heaven if you've got pit bulls and chickens that are getting along. That's oh uh, yeah, and a <laughs> and a cat. <laughs> and a cat. That's crazy. <laughs> what? <laughs> Man, this is something going on. That kind of unity. Yeah. It's just hey, hey. It's it's yeah. the world. The world where it is right now. Anything's possible. Love hey, sight. Love some. Hey, Mike, Mike hey. Are, the, are the chickens singing I Will Die For You? <laughs> uh, they, are, they are singing I Will Lay an Egg For You. <laughs> I Will Lay an Egg For You. <laughs> oh. oh, my gosh. All right. So yeah. what we, the reason why we gather here today is obviously we are doing this series called the Prince Band Series. We're going through... Uh, Prince's bands. We started with the Revolution last week, and we're doing the '90s version of MPG. Next one will be the the 2000s versions or the aughts or whatever they call it uh, version of the MPG. But since we're in the '90s version of MPG, what we're trying to do is get a little bit more insight into exactly what <coughs> Prince's vision may have been. Right. Um, you know, a, a lot of people were saying as far as the '90s version of uh, of MPG that. That that people people said that Prince was trying to fight off the critics and and said that you know he wasn't relevant to his black audience anymore and that 
he was taking this major swing to try to rectify that. What was, and I'll let, I'll kind of leave this open to anybody on the floor. What was the common factor that you saw from the wings uh, that you feel that maybe he was trying to accomplish in 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 this period. What because there was something very very drastically different when you crossed over from all the albums that came out in the '80s and the '90s. There was something very distinctly different there. What exactly do you think it was that he was trying to do in this period? I'm gonna jump in if uh, if uh, Morris and the rest of you guys don't mind. I'm gonna make a quick comment sure. on that because sure. I came in and. Uh, Morrison remembers I came in in 95, 96, and mm -hmm. Emancipation had just been released. And uh, in my opinion, that was his opportunity to make a statement that he was freed from that, you know, the the, the strife and the, the the being held down by that that Warner Brothers, all that all that deal. Please. And Emancipation, he was free. He was free. Yep. And so the music. Uh, if uh, I, I think Morris might agree with me, the music was reflecting his freedom. His, uh, you know, he didn't right. have slave on his face anymore, and uh, it was just a new day. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think I, I agree with Mike. Uh, I think there was a lot of, uh, you know, uh, once he got to that place, you know, and plus at the time, you know, Prince was, uh, you know, about to have a kid, and you know, he was just on, in a whole different place, man. His whole attitude his whole thing was just different um and 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 i just remember just some of the conversations around that time you know prince had built this whole swing set outside like you know the things that you go down to like this uh, costco and get the swing for like 12 the whole, man the kid was a stomach and he, and he went and got all of that stuff even before the kid was like a stomach it was crazy because he had just he was feeling that whole family vibe, the whole change, everything. It just like came to another place, I think, mentally. And so when Prince was always about, uh, you know, like even with the different bands, when you talk about the early, uh, the early uh, NPG, uh, the 94, 95 band, the 96 band, the energy would change with the people, you know, and that was something that Prince was consistent about is making sure that when he got different people, the energy, the sound, everything changed, you know, everything mm -hmm. changed. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And, and, and Tony, same question, because really, you know, you were kind of at the forefront of this. I mean, you and I have spoken about this many times before that, you know, you, you've had your unfair share of detractors, but you obviously had a front row view in his direction. And you had said to me before that this was the prince that all of you knew when he wasn't on stage i mean it just it's just that the world hadn't seen this this side of him yet and but beyond that what do you think that he was he was trying to do here in regards to how he wanted to be perceived by his audience at the time what, what's your view on this well well it's funny we did see prince in all those other forms they were just alter egos right it was more dead or it was jamie star it was you know what i mean you, i mean some of the personality you did see you you saw it out of him the whole time i mean again i as I stated before, we had grew up with Prince in, in, in North Minneapolis and South Minneapolis with this cat. And this was nothing new to me. I I, I look at that 90s, uh, the early 90s, the, the, the original lineup of the new card from a, from a uh, musical standpoint of allowing other individuals to contribute to a sound. Right. Uh, based on, you know, based on the members of that group. So it wasn't just about me. It was about Levi. It was about, you know, it was about Miko, it was about Rosie, it was about all of these people as a collective together to, to, to make this original sound. So, you know, while while we talk about, you know, my detractors, this or that another, I don't, you know, I, I don't play into it at all. I just look like I was a I was a vehicle, I was a part of that sound, I was a part of helping form that sound, which we were blessed. I mean, uh, I was so blessed to be a part of that and and to learn and to watch and and, and for him to just school, like, you know, I think we've talked plenty of times before. He would school you and you wouldn't even know it. You know, he, he's just putting you up on game the whole time. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 Levi, you actually switched instruments, you know, in, in this period. Did you go from bass to bass. guitar in this mix? And yes, uh, yes. Yeah, so so yeah, what what's your perception of this? Um as far as what you feel like he was trying to you know, do you feel like there was a message or, or something different that he was trying to communicate to his audience with this particular 
uh, setup of NPG that he was doing. Because you got to understand, we came from the 80s where we were doing, uh, it was very, very much, um, I, I was very much addicted to the Minneapolis sound, that funk and everything. And this was just, this was so, so different. This was, this had elements of hip hop. It was, it was, it was a lot more aggressive. And you had actually seen a, a lot of this, you know, a lot of this pattern of him kind of, of going to this era. So, I mean, again, mm -hmm. what's your perception of exactly what, what way have been going on there? Well, well, the first thing I want to clear up, you know, Prince is capable. He's the only artist I know in the world, in the universe, the universe that I know that can do any music that he wants to. Right. Mm -hmm. So okay. when somebody criticizes him, it's kind of weird. It's, you know, and I'll never forget, I was at his house and he said, Levi, they said, I'm not funky no more. <laughs> right. But mm -hmm. he was hot as Morse term fish grease. He was hot as fish grease. <laughs> <laughs> Cayenne he, said, Cayenne he said, yeah, he yeah. said, Levi, they said, I ain't funky no more. And I said, what? Who said that? He said, never mind, but check this out. And he played me the Black Album. Yeah. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> when yeah. you listen to the album, it's 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 got what we call throw up funk. You know, yeah. like if you're on an airplane, they got a throw up bag. <laughs> it's so funky you have to bend over. And, oh, my. It, it was it was that funky, man. So to me, his his first of all, he could do any music he want to. But he was a little insulted that they would not have faith in him to know that he can do all that because he did it already. I mean, how much more funk do you want than let's go work? Really? Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? It's just yeah, it's some exactly. things don't get no funkier than that, but they were still saying that. Yeah. So anyway, um, this I want to bring in Sheila at this point. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. you know, Sheila was a big part of not not Prince, I mean, Prince is the one, but Sheila brought in an energy. A, a kind of like competitive energy. She's competitive. That's what makes her like baddest female drummer in the world. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. Sheila is. It ain't no male and female thing. She's like, I'm gonna whoop your ass. <laughs> so, yeah. so you better come with it. So, so anyway, um, if you notice, you know, a lot of the members that were in her band eventually went into his band, and there was a sound that he liked about. Um, you know, Oakland and Cal San Francisco and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I think he felt like with those type of players, um, and he also wanted to grow into um, a different kind of musician because he can play anything, but I think he wanted to experiment. Like Tony said, he allowed us to kind of do what we do. I mean, there were a lot of sessions, the Morris can tell you, that mm -hmm. we all put the songs together with him. Mm -hmm. You know, like when we did Sexy MF. That was, you know, uh, I know if, if Tony remembers, you know, we just sitting there. And, you know, when I was on the road, I used to make up this this term, you know, we some sexy motherfucker, right? <laughs> and and I, I used to do that at the end of the show and play around. But when we got in the studio, he was like, we got into this groove. He said, all right, Levi, put some chicken grease on it. I did my thing. Everybody at Groove was cooking. And then he hit a break and he said, you know what you've been singing on the road? Sing that right here. <laughs> and that's how, I mean, you know, but I'll make a long story. That's basically how they came together. But he allowed us to contribute to his greatness, which I'm honored to, to just look back. And I'm just like, how did all this happen? Because he don't need us. <laughs> he don't need nobody. Trust me. He don't need nobody. Yeah, he's already proven he can do it by himself. Yeah, yeah. So I think he was trying to have a sound that was um, encompass other musicians, other vibes, other spirits to create something new. And that was part of his uh, evolution. Yeah. That's my answer. Yeah, no, that's a, and that's a great answer. Rob and I were talking about this. It's a great answer. Uh, before, yeah, Rob and I were talking about this before, is that even the albums that I didn't appreciate when they came out, it, years later, and sometimes even a decade later, like I never was a fan of Emancipation. I don't know why. It was just something because, of, once again, I was that Minneapolis sound funk guy, and there wasn't like a whole bunch of that on Emancipation. But now here we are, however many years removed from Emancipation, and it's a really great album. And it's like, 
<laughs> this guy was so far ahead of his time that we, you, you can't, if, if you don't like it, come back to it later. It's, it's, it's going to, it's absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. Go ahead, Mike. Oh, oh I was just going to elaborate on that point. It all makes sense. Was a jumping on you know, Levi just said, he said, Princeton, he ended us. And Morris did remember one time he said, or else he said, I wish I had. Man, you breaking up like a mug, Mike. You're going to have to say all of that over again, bro. <laughs> you got that Georgia. You got that Georgia. Uh, okay, I got, you, got that, you got that trailer funk out in the woods of Georgia. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, look, you know, unfortunately, in Georgia, in Georgia, you can't get uh, internet until you have a physical house. You can't get cable. So I'm using a little Moxie hotspot. Where are you talking about, Willis? Come on, Joe Biden, with this. Hey, with hey, this, hey, hold up. Hold, hey, check this out. Prince, Prince has said, he said, he said, if I had five clones of myself, it'd be the baddest band in the world because I would never have to tell them what to play. They'd all know what to play and they'd be bad. And I said, I said, yeah, you know, one of them be running around Paisley naked. You'd have to catch him and put clothes on. <laughs> be one, be, be one it'd be one crazy one. All five of them ain't going to be normal. One going to be crazy. <laughs> yeah. Levi, Levi was, Levi you know was right about that. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know what's funny, Mike? Nice. Uh, is, 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 what's funny is I remember when uh, uh, Barbarella, Sonny, and, and Mike, uh, we were in Japan in like about 96. And um, we had, you know, man, you know how it would be. Uh, Vi, you know, you and Tony yeah. both know how. when bef Back in the day, Whenever we go overseas, you know, everything had to go on a ship. It had to get shipped. So that's like a two, yeah. three month ride. Everything had to sit on the truck on the boat for all of that time. So in those months, that that was kind of like cool. Uh oh. Uh, Mike, did you give Morris your uh, your internet service? No. No, oh, yeah, what happened? Yeah, yeah, he jumped on. No. <laughs> what happened is, no, what happened is somebody trying to call doing an interview to my hey man, you on TV. I see you on TV. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I had to hang up on their butts. But anyway, you know so 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 the, the everything ships and you kind of have the three months to kind of like chill, write your own music, do whatever you do while all of the gear is on the way to Japan, right? So when right. we get to where we're going. We got about three, four days for production rehearsal to rehearse before the show starts on the tour over there. But what do Prince do? He come in and we jam for three days. And then the last day we kind of like go over the show. <laughs> so what happened is he was blowing cues left and right. Like, like, and, and you know, when you, bro, if you're in a song and you know what's supposed to happen when on the second verse and he sang the third verse, and, and some cats think, do I go with him or do I play what I know I'm supposed to play right here? Right. Half will go with him, half will <laughs> play what you're supposed to play, and guess what you got? That's called a cluster F. Right? <laughs> so I, he wasn't happy. He wasn't happy after that happened. He was not friends with us. He would have the road manager talk to us like he'd be right there and tell Morris that he needed to do this and that and the other thing. And I'm like, nigga, I can hear you right you're right there. I'm sitting right, I'm sitting right you know, here. You know what I'm saying? So, but what I said to those guys after a couple few days of this, I told them, I said, let me tell y'all something. After this tour, we're done. We're done. Because I can tell you where he's at. Because there's two things that Prince hasn't done that he need, that he wants to do. I said, one is an all-girls band, and two, a band of clones. Now, he ended, I was almost right because he did both of those things. He had the girl band, and the last thing he did was just him. And that's the kind of parallel thing to the clones. It was the the piano and a mic thing. It was just him. And that was, and just like Mike said, it's crazy, Mike, that you said that. Because when I told him, I said, he wants a band of clones because then it will be just like he wanted to be. Well, then what's the closest thing you get? I even asked him that. I said, Prince, after he got to be a Jehovah's Witness, I said, Prince, I said, uh, if you could be cloned, uh, would you do it? And he kind of had to, you know how he kind of do that thing? He looks like this, Levi. He's like, hmm, well, <laughs> um, uh, well, yeah, I don't, that's it. 
Um, and I said, come on, man, tell the truth. Tell the truth. <laughs> Shame the devil. Well, yeah. I said you can't answer that joke because you know you'll do it. If the scientists told you, like, yeah, Prince, we have a clone ready, we could uh, get you in. We can do this right now. I said you know you'll be down at the station getting that joke. (laughs) (laughs) But but that's what he wanted, and so that's what the pinnacle to me. That was the, the that was the deal when he did the piano and the mic. He had did everything that he could possibly do as an as a artist. Prince was like Levi said, he did everything so good. That's what used to piss me off when I would look at these guitar player magazines and Rolling Stone interviews. Where, mm-hmm. I mean, Rolling Stone articles where they say the hundred greatest guitar right. players or greatest dancers or greatest. And I'm like, yeah. man, if Prince only did one of those things, he'd be at the top of every one of those lists. Yeah. As bad as Jimi Hendrix was, and I, I hey, my my quaff parvu for Jimi Hendrix, but guess what? Prince would beat the brakes off of Jimi Hendrix because he don't have the range, the versatility that Prince had. That's what makes his his vocabulary on keys, on drums, on guitar, on bass. Prince played the bass with a stick, <laughs> like with all of the legends. You talk about Graham, you talking about Stanley Clark, and people like that. Prince would play with gloves on and play with a drumstick and play with stuff and you just be like, oh my God. Like <laughs> that's enough by itself to put him at the top of the list for any of those categories. But because he does so many things well, he always got overlooked. It used to piss me off. Like, how does he end up number 27 down on I had yeah. Steve Vai give me a guitar and do like this. I'm fucking Steve Vai, bro. Yeah. One sure. of the baddest dudes on the planet. He came in like this, hey he said, hey man I, I want you to give Prince this this guitar, man, and and uh and I, I he said I, he said he's he's my hero, man, and I'm like, man, you was the devil in Crossroads, man. Come on, bad <laughs> Steve. Said, Steve loves some Prince, man. He man, loves he some Prince, Prince yeah. man. He gave and when I gave the guitar to Prince, he said, "What's this?" I said, "Hey, Steve, I down and hey, he down there recording. He wanted you to have this this seven string." He said. Mm, I can do what I need to do with six. <laughs> I like, I like, I like nigga, take, take this guitar, man. Come on, man. Quit playing. But, but my point is, my point oh. is, is that Prince was so great at all of these things. I think a lot of times that he got marginalized because he could do so much. He could do what Michael Jackson could do, but Michael couldn't do him. He could do what 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 what, what uh, uh, Jimmy could do, but Jimmy couldn't do him. Cause Jimmy, you can't mark him down as a singer. Singer, he like had a style. You know, hey Joe, he just talked his way through a song. Prince could sing, man. Yeah. Like some run, some you know falsetto, and the lowest of low and the highest of high. You know, no, I don't yeah. know a lot of singers had range like that, bro. Yeah, but so, so it, you know, and his voice was consistent every. Freaking! He never was hoarse, right. never was flat, nope. never. Yeah. He would never miss a note. Yeah, all of that every day. I remember, uh, Joshua Welton was on the uh, on the show, and he was saying that he, when he realized one of the moments that was really eye opening for him is that he was standing off stage, and Prince was playing this super intricate solo. And I guess there was like a problem with the monitor. And while he's playing the solo, he walks over to the Mm. the side the side of the stage and is having a discussion with the gentleman that's running the monitor while he's playing this insanely intricate solo. And they're just having this discussion and he's playing the solo without even thinking about it. It's just it was just all second nature. It was just music just flowing out of him. And Morris, I love this story that you told in 2017. Uh, I believe it was at the celebration. You had mentioned that it was at the end of some tour, and one of the guitar techs gave him a guitar that was completely out of tune. And yeah. you told a story. <laughs> Please retell that story for those who well, have. I mean, you know, Levi was there. He knows what I'm talking about. I mean, basically, we had, we had a we had a guy named Fred who was like the guitar tech. And uh, Tony, y'all know Fred. I mean, everybody remember Fred. Uh, but you know, he was gonna be heading out, and uh, and I think his part in Salvo is he was gonna give Prince this out of El Cabon guitar, and 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 jack him up. And I think it was at um, at Wembley. 
you know, at the, at the arena. Wembley. Oh my god. And uh, yeah, man. So not the stadium, but at the arena. Oh. So, okay. uh, no. so, but but I mean, it's still, you know, you're talking about twelve thousand people. Or whatever. Right. That's a, that's a gang of folks at your show. Yeah. So he hands him this guitar, man, and and this is a section where Prince is just playing his guitar. We just kind of on the stage chilling, and he goes to hit that open chord, and it's El Cabone. Prang! And it's all, <laughs> all kind of wrong. And those of us who know, whenever it's your day, bro, when Prince cut that side eye and look at you with that, yeah, I got you, I got you. He looked over there, and this dude proceeded to take every note on his guitar because he in the middle, Prince Old School, it's, everything was going to be, the show must go on. It's not going to be no, uh, y'all, excuse me for a minute, let me go get a new guitar right quick. Uh, this dude, no excuses, no, none of that. It's like the show is going, so the show must go on, bro. You figure it out on the spot. This dude starts tuning his guitar string for string, kind of hitting a little solo on every string. And doing all of that. <laughs> Every note got that joint, and when I tell you, bro, when he got all six strings in, this dude proceeds to like do a solo that will cut any neck of anybody you ever seen to let him know, like, you wow. can't mess with my show. I look at Levi, bro, because I ain't never seen nothing like this. I never. I was like, uh oh, this is bad, and this ain't gonna go over well. <laughs> Wrong. You know, and I and we looked at each other like, dude, did you just see that shit? Did you just see that? It was, but I was like, oh my God, my mouth is open. And we always had to keep our show face, you know what I'm saying? I, you can't look amazed and, and crazy, you know, you get, but I'm sorry, I broke all program. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm looking like this, man, because this dude did his thing, got his guitar in tune, at least with itself. You know what I'm saying? Because one thing Prince had, he didn't have perfect pitch, but Prince had perfect relative pitch. Like he could ask you, uh, what key is uh, B flat? You play B flat. He knows where everything is from there. Everything. And then he uh, he also knows uh, relative minors. So he could go, mm. he said, he asked me one time, he said, what key is the most beautiful girl in? I said, B flat. He kind of do that thing where you look in there. He said, okay, if you play the samples on this song in A, uh, this song is an A, then it'll work. It'll work. He'll know it'll work before I even, and then I try, I said, dang, it works. It's like, you know, because he knows what that is once he has a reference point. Michael Bland and Sonny is, is, is a whole nother thing because right. they, they got a whole nother thing. Them dudes can hear grass growing because they just know they got perfect pitch. And they know what key it is. This is crass. Right. <laughs> this, this is crass for all you females out there because this is me and humor. But we on the tour bus one time and somebody broke wind. And I asked him, son, what key is that? He said, almost B flat. It's in between B <laughs> and B flat. <laughs> B, B for butt. <laughs> it's, he said, it's between B and B flat. It's right in between. I said, God. I just say I'm out of my pay grade, yo. I just this is just bananas. These dudes can hear like that. You just, what, what you gonna say? You know, it's just like they just need to get down like that. That's what made this band the NPG to me, you know, and getting back to the point of, of, of like this band, you know, Prince had a he had a, a group of ninjas basically with these groups. You know, he had ninjas, man, that could come out there and, and, and he could let them do their thing. You know, Levi did something so crazy one time. Uh, and this is the kind of stuff Prince talked about when he with the lessons like there ain't no it's no it's not a mistake until you stop. I remember Levi's guitar went out. Some happened either with his pack or something, and he was out playing the solo, and and either his pack died or some came. I don't know what happened, but Levi never broke character, and and kept playing the solo like it was still go. Everybody's looking at the sound man like, bro, turn him up. He like he he killing his solo. And nobody can hear him, and nobody, and, and everybody was looking at the sound man like he was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Because he never broke character, he never stopped, and, and let somebody know that that was a problem. You know, and 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 when you got people like that in your band, then Prince can jump off because he told me he says, "Man, when I ain't worried about what y'all doing, I'm free. I can do what I do. If I ain't got to think about what you're doing, Morris. If I ain't got to think about what." What, what, what the drums are going to do. He didn't have to think about Michael Bland. He didn't, I can count on one hand the times he said anything to Michael Bland about anything. You know, that's right. Sonny, 
You know, I can count on one hand anything he said about Levi, anything like that. I was the one to get choked me in Blackwell. But the thing <laughs> is, that's what the that, that was the level of, of comfort that he had with that band. And that also then gave him uh, that thing that even like in the after shows, how he could just go into something knowing they're going to catch me, man. We're going to jump off the bridge and we're going to have I'm going to have a net because they're going to grab this joint, man. Uh, that that vi- that movie with, that we did, uh, uh, Sacrifice the Victor. Mm. <laughs> bro i'm sorry i'm sorry for any other bands i'm sorry i gotta i gotta share this video if i can wait a minute did i cue the guitar in? come in baby dude. come on man. look at this Specimen number two. Don't get too close. It might rub off. I don't know. Is it? He looked like a pimp to me. Detroit, this is the no pimp zone. What? Look, look. Look at it. Oh, no. He got a scarf on and everything. What gang you in, son? He said cool in the gang. Well, I bet you I, I can't stand pimps, but I like that step. Come on, y'all, hit it with me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand pimps. <laughs> uh, now, now, how you go? How you go from a reverend to a pimp? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Just like that. And that was, but see, that's some That's a hell of a crew. Uh, once again, you got Chance Howard. You know, and much love, uh, Chance, if you're out there, brother. Much love to you, brother. We 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 always thinking about it's you. A hell of a crew. Um, uh, but it's just, it's just crazy. Hobby. It's just so much talent, man. And he just was free. He could do what he wanted to do because he knew Mike was gonna hold it. Renato was gonna hold it. Somebody gonna go step up and they are gonna do something, make your mind blow. You know? Yeah. So so Mike, I gotta ask you, man. What what is you know, especially looking back at moments like that, what are some of these, some things that you remember that, that Prince did either, you know, during a show or even during a rehearsal that that kind of like similar to the stories that, that Morris just said, you were just like, this guy is just, I mean, outside of listening to his music, obviously. But, you well, know, what really was like an eye-opening moment for you? Well, uh, hey, between Levi and Prince, man, I learned more about playing the guitar than I've learned in my entire career from anybody. <clears throat> but, oh, um, <laughs> you know, um, oh, Levi, you're next. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. I, 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 there was a time he had, he had, um, when Rhonda, Cat Dyson, Kirk was playing drums, Morris, we were all up in the apartment look, looking at a video of that band with Tommy, Sonny, Horn, his. Morris, Levi, and we were watching them or, or do a gig. And Prince came over and leaned in and whispered to me, he said, that was the baddest band I ever had. And I was like, no joke. <laughs> that, and that was true story right there. You know, it was Tony, it was all of them. But he, he, he leaned in and whispered that to me. And I never told the rest of the band he said that. But uh, it, that's nice. It's a learning experience, man. The greatest thing about Prince is that you came in being a good musician or a great musician, but you left there, he always made sure he pushed each one of us to be even more amazing musicians. We we became more amazing than we even realized that we could be. And and, and Morris will attribute it that, that sometimes his 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 ways were a little hard to be he talked down to a little bit but it was to, it was to make you a better but I'm gonna tell you this funny story since you asked. Uh, we were in London or something. I want you to remember this? He's he's sitting outside in the car waiting to come up, and his rig went up in flames. Boom! Went up. Takumi <laughs> Takumi was trying to trying to get a buzz out, and his rig up. and uh, they're like, man, you come in and play. And everybody's freaking. They don't know what to do. Song, play, 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 play
that's that first song, and then they got it on then. Mike, you, man. <laughs> Mike, you're breaking up. I, I was, I was oh, trying to get in there and, and put oh. the words together. Uh, that was working out. Let's oh, well, 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 the long story short, long story, Prince came to the stage to play the gig, and his rig had blown up unbeknownst to him. He was playing through my rig, and he, he, he danced over near me, and he said, my guitar sounds amazing tonight. We got a mic drop on Mike. Wow. <laughs> oh, no, you suck, right? <laughs> hey, hey, look. Uh, uh, can you hear me now? Can you hear yeah. me now? Yeah, absolutely. Can you hear me now? Yep. Can you hear me now? He can hear you. Can you hear me now? <laughs> hey. hey. You know what's crazy? You can't get really internet know. until you have a physical house. I have never, in all the other states we've worked in, I've never heard that. You can't get internet until you get a building. Well, the infrastructure plan is coming, Mike. They're going to get some internet in the rural areas. Thank you. <laughs> no, they, no, they got internet. If you got a house, they got internet. <laughs> Welcome to a real estate. Well, I'm, I can tell you right now, in Arkansas, a bunch of trailers is houses, bro. That's a trailer. It's a house. <laughs> oh, and then, uh, but not an RV. An RV cannot be considered a house because it's, it's got wheels and can move. Uh, so they they don't consider that a standing house because you can move it. <laughs> yeah, so there's a little yeah, tid bit of information for all you that didn't know that out there. You yeah, they can't they can't put a power the power company will not connect the power pole to something that moves. <laughs> amen, amen. That's We're not going to shame your trailer net. Yeah, that's probably just, a good idea. We just do that. We just call it trailer net, and we'll be good with it. Hey. I think you done came up with something, bro. Trailer net. Hey, I'm like, I'm I'm in like a, I got money in that stock right there. That's right. Hey, look, I'm I'm in a uh, I'm in a 37 foot RV. It's sweet, boy. It's it's sweet. Uh, nice, Levi. I know you got. I know you got a story. I know you got a story too. I mean, Morris just got done saying that Prince had nothing but just amazing things to say about you. But there had there. I know there was a, absolutely a moment for you as well where you just were just like. Man, this cat is just otherworldly. He's just like, it, 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 was there a moment that you can remember that you were just like, man, this guy is just, he's like a golden unicorn. That <laughs> it's just unreal. Oh, yeah. Um, well, we, uh, I got two quick stories. So the first one, we we're in the studio. And, um, you know, he, I, I was blessed to spend a lot of time with him and kind of watch him put things together and he kind of took me under his wing and said, Hey, you know, do it like this. Don't do that. You know? And so I appreciated that. But one day, um, he was working on something and we had just finished the music and he said, Hey, give me about an hour and a half. I got to do some stuff and then come back. So remember there's no singing on the record at this point. Right. So I come back in an hour and a half and he hits the play button, and it's like a hundred voice choir on it, <laughs> you know, all of these intricate harmonies, written everything. And I'm like, you just did that? He said, yeah. Do you like it? I mean, he was never like, yeah, I'm amazing, huh? It was never <laughs> like that. I mean, because I mean, you know, that was obvious, but I I could not believe he had laid all of that down in an hour and a half. And I'm saying record ready, not demo. I mean, ready to hit the hit the store and sell some copies. And, yeah. and I I just couldn't believe it. And I remember saying to myself, I was look, I looked up in the sky and I said, God, you know that's not fair. <laughs> how can one how can one individual have that much talent? You know, right. just to go from different things just effortlessly. Yeah. So that's my yeah. first story. The second one is um, I shared this before, but not on a show like this. So we were uh, backstage and all the band members know this is about 10 minutes before the show. We usually have a prayer and everybody's getting ready. And if we were outside, we know we have to walk to the stage and we, you know, we're in the, in the back doing our thing. And uh, this was very early on uh, one of my first shows with Prince. Um, So I said, good luck. 
And he walked over to me. I thought Obviously. I said the worst thing in the world. <laughs> He's, he said, don't ever say that to me. I said, well, oh, I'm like, I didn't know how to take that because I was being friendly. Like, you know, I say it all the time. He said, listen, Levi, we're going to go out and kick some ass because we practice. It's not about luck. Yeah. You know, luck is for people who don't work. So you hope you hope that you have a good show because you really didn't do the work. And right. so he said, that's why I drill you guys, because even in your sleep, you can go out and do a great show. Mm -hmm. So don't it's never about luck. And I don't want to ever hear you say that again. He said, I'm not trying to be mean, but don't say that because we work hard for excellence. And he made and he also said. Because one night the band was like, you know, it's a little tired. You know, the, the tour can be draining, right. mostly physically everything, because he's asking a lot of them. We change the show every day. Everybody knows that. So, and he and he said, uh, I was MD at the time, and he says, oh, the band is a little, you know, they a little moody tonight. But he said, what? He said, you know what? I don't care. Because <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't about that. This is about the fans. Right. I don't care if you're having a good time. We're here so that they can have a good time. I mean, you know, they saved up their money. They they opened their calendars up, up to see us. And we're going to give them the best that we can do. So you tell the band that I said, I don't care. Now, you said it a different way. I can't say that on air. <laughs> Oh, you can. <laughs> but I just thought, you know, that always stuck with me because, you know, in the world, everybody, especially now in the generation we have, everybody's hoping for things and they want to do a little work and get a great reward. He was never like that. Never like that. You know, this whole viral thing, like that's like an accident. Like, no, Prince is great all the time. He wanted the band great all the time. And there's no secret. You do the work, and you will be good. As simple as that. Yeah, that's that's amazing. I I I couldn't yeah. agree more. Yeah, and he was he would always go viral before that was even a thing. <laughs> I mean, he was right. a marketing <laughs> genius. You know, he, he was, is viral. That's his yeah. name, viral. <laughs> viral. L I am viral. The <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, Tony, you still there? Yeah, I'm sure here, y'all. Yeah, man. Let me. Uh, I, I know you got some stories. <laughs> I know you got some stories. Probably some dance stories too. I imagine. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember uh, just coming off the whole Purple Rain, uh, the filming of Purple Rain, and um, we thought it was our uh, it was our time. We were like, wow, man, we 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 made it. We made it. Uh, to the film, we even made it to the after, uh, you know, to the to, to the premiere of Purple Rain. And we were going out. He called us out at the. Uh, it wasn't Paisley Park yet, but he had a facility out in uh, Eden Prairie, and um, he called us out to do um, to listen to a new song. He said, "I want you guys to uh, basically debut this song at the uh, at, at the premiere, the after party of Purple Rain, in Los Angeles." We're, you know, like, we're losing our minds. Well, what? What? We're gonna do what? And we get out there, and the track was uh, Erotic City, right? He, no one had ever heard it. Wow. And uh, and we go out, and we uh, perform and lip sync the whole thing. And I just remember my mind being blown that we're out here, and he didn't want anybody to know that it was him. Now, how do you not know it was him? But I remember <laughs> Eddie Murphy. You got Eddie Murphy, uh, uh, George Clinton, all these cats coming up to us. I mean, I, I'm blown. I'm standing next to George Duke, and... And all these cats, they're like, man, that is the funkiest thing I've ever heard, man. When y'all dropping that? And I looked at Prince and I was like, dude, what are we supposed to do with this? They think this is us, right? He said, no, don't say a word. You can't say a word about it. And uh, so that was his thing, man. He would just, he, he would drop things. And as, as Lady I would say, or you just said, he would be viral. He dropped things and no one even knew what, you know, up under different monikers. And it just blew us away, man. I mean, we did that premiere. We thought we were getting ready to go on the Purple Rain tour. Everything happens in its time. I, I remember talking to Rodney Fitzgerald, and uh, we were doing an MPG show, and I think we were doing Sexy MF. And Fitz was in the front row, and I brought him the mic. All of a sudden, he just screamed, you sexy mother. You know, so he was ready. 
right? He was ready to burn the house down with that one. I said, Pitts, that was preparation meets meets opportunity. And that's what I would say. He said, as the Bible was stating, the, the whole luck thing. No, man, you gotta be you gotta be prepared. It wasn't our time when we felt it was our time. Um, Prince was, uh, and he was loyal to people, man. I mean, if you had put in your time and your work, I mean, it, it eventually would come around. Maybe not when you wanted it to, but you know, it would eventually come around. I remember us going through the phases of waiting for Jerome and and Wally and Brooks to and Cat and them to go through their phase, and you know, but we felt like, well, wait a minute, we were the first ones here. It, that should be us up on stage. But it was just a, it was a different energy. It was the different phases that he was going through. So when I remember Jerome saying, yeah, you guys came with just the, the chaotic hype, just the hype dance. You know, we were stepping like, you know, James Brown and, you know, and then back in the day, you guys came with gymnastics, leaping over each other and, and, and all of that. And I remember our first rehearsal, Prince walked in and said, yeah, I, I, I want to do some of that. And Damon and Kirk and I looked at him like, you want to do some of what, man? You hit, you hit your little steps on over there, man, then we'll bring you on over, you know, and he'll look up. He wanted to be a part of it, all of it, man. There you go. Yeah, there, there you go. He wanted to be a part of all of it, man. And it's so funny because he would do his thing and come back right on cue. He wasn't playing, man. Yeah, I had to turn down the audio and make sure that Facebook doesn't kick us off. But, yeah, I, I was watching, like, some of these dance moves and stuff, and, man, it was just – it is unbelievable to me some of the stuff that you guys had to do and the amount of practice that you guys had to go through. Just, man, I mean, I'm, oh, right. let me tell you something. We were sweating like Hebrew slaves, man. <laughs> <laughs> we, man, we were working hard, man. We, we got out there, man, and we just looking for a little bit of fan. So I was always trying to make my way toward Prince. So I'm getting a little bit of that breeze because he had that big fan right in the middle. And man, we go, Levi, you know, we be doing six, seven, eight songs straight, man, and nothing but dance routines. And then all of a sudden, he walk up into a wardrobe change and tell me, Tony, you got the mic now. Bro, I can barely breathe. Now I gotta try to I gotta try to do something on the microphone. But man, that was that was the test. That was, I mean, that was all that preparation and work that we put in, all those hours of practice, man, just prepared you for that. I mean, there ain't no way I could go through any of this, you know, without that preparation. But we, you know, there it is. Yeah, I mean, you guys were killing it, man. Oh my God. It was just just amazing. I you know, I've had you on the show a few times and I always uh I always kick myself whenever because I, I've always wanted to ask you this question. And for some reason, I, I've never had the opportunity to ask you. So now I'm going to ask you now. And, and I'm going to play a little clip, and you'll know what it is. It's from uh, Jughead. Take a listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> the hell was that? <laughs> I always wanted to know. Did you really not know what that was when it was? <laughs> yeah. So we, we knew it was Rosie, but you know, just the way it came in, I was like, wait a minute. It just kind of came in out of nowhere. And I'm sitting in the booth and I'm going, what the hell was that? Where'd that come from? <laughs> because that wasn't the part of how we had worked out the song in the first place. And there was always ways, like I would write a song a certain way. And um, it never failed in some instances. I would come through and Prince would just chop it up. Like I'd have 16 bars prepared, ready to rip. He said, oh, I only want four here. And he'd chop it up and he'd put another four over here or give me eight here. And it would just, it took me a while. It was him producing me and, and at the same time. But it just, you know, you talk to any MC who puts his lyrics together, man. You, you chop up a flow or you chop up those, uh, those verses and now you... It, it just it throws you for a loop for a second, and he didn't do it until I got in the booth. So it wasn't like I was prepared for it; it just happened. So, uh, so I always got prepared to work to be thrown for a loop. And I remember uh, Levi uh, and then uh, Michael Bland, cute. Oh, that's one take Tony. One take Tony. I come in and knock it out in one take, and I'd be out the studio. I didn't like being in the studio. I was not a studio rat. I wanted to come in, knock my stuff out. And go play some hoop or something like that. So it was Mo and Levi and them. They loved the board. They loved tweaking the knobs. I didn't, I couldn't stand any of that. My <laughs> thing was the stage. I wanted to hit the stage. I wanted to whoop ass on the stage. That was my thing. Yeah. 
I <laughs> I'm so glad I was able to get that question out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Literally every time I hear that song, I was like, dang it, I forgot to ask him about that. You know, hey, that was, hey, 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 hey. What the hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of a thing that Prince was really cool. There there's over the years there's been uh several places where he used some of the outtakes in the actual track. Uh, he did it with uh, Billy Jack Bitch, with Sonny at the end of the track, unplugging his bass. And, you know, we know in the studio, you're not supposed to unplug your stuff until they mute you. Sonny mm -hmm. just unplugged. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and so <laughs> he, just, he, just, he, just, he just left the tape running. And Sonny, you know, after we finished the song, he's like, uh -huh, some bad motherfucker. You know, and he just left it in the track. And and, and there was one uh, that was uh, Calhoun Square. Uh, at the beginning of the track, Prince is telling us, you know, because sometimes we'll do a couple of few takes. And he just said, like, uh, keep it in time with the drummer. Uh, you, it's supposed to be fun. Two, three, baby. And it's just like, he would he would just, and he, he'd hear the outtake and be like, yeah, we're going to keep that. We're going to keep Tony. Saying what the hell is that? We're gonna keep sunny, <laughs> you know. We're gonna keep that that little piece because it 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 it, it, it it's something that adds then to that track. It, it it adds another thing. And he was always listening for something special in every song. And as a songwriter, it's a difficult thing for a normal songwriter to just sound different for every song. Prince was wrote a song a day, like, and could still make stuff different, man. That's what yeah. was so nutty about this cat is that the fact that as many songs as he has, it, even though it's a, his sound, he's got the sound, but it's a different thing. And it's just, he's able to just like keep making something new and making something special happen in every, I bet you can go through any Prince song and you're going to find something that's special in that track. Either the, the way he did the vocals, the way that he played a guitar, the way somebody played a key, or some mm -hmm. something is in that track is going to be like there's something special in it, and I think that was amazing about him and uh, and and how he approached music and how he did things. It just was uncanny. Yeah, and you even say even going back to his earliest stuff, I would have to agree with you because of the fact that the other day I was doing some work and I had the Funked Up app on, which every single day from seven until two both 7 to 2, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. to 2 a.m., the Funked Up app plays all prints for those huge chunks of the day. And when we're dancing, Close and Slow came on, and I don't, I honestly can't remember the, this guitar part that was in the background. For some reason, it had never really struck me before. It had not, it, it really just completely caught me off guard. I was like, I don't remember ever hearing that particular guitar part. And just like you said, there's so many layers that he would just pile on. I mean, everything from the windshield wipers on free to all the different things like the horns. And uh, and I was even listening this little snippet of uh, Morris Day and Jerome doing doing their little uh, shenanigans from the Purple Rain movie where they're talking about the password is what. Um, I was listening to all of the the sound effects that he would layer in the background of that whole entire conversation because Morris would go, hold on a second. And you would lightly hear this horn in the background going. Meh, meh. So it was like, this dude was thinking <laughs> of everything, like yeah. every single little minute detail. He was just peppering these things in that subconsciously just really just built so many, so many dimensions to songs. And that's just, I, I, it's, I, so basically, all that being said, I totally agree with you, Morris. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, uh, literally, with all of the musicians that, that Prince is, you know, with the NPG, there's been a ton of musicians. All of us have these incredible stories. That's what's so remarkable, uh, remarkable about it. You know, you could ask Barbarella, you could ask Damon, you could ask, you know, Bland, and, it, and they have the same amount of stories that's like, that's different and from a different perspective of things that they've learned. And, and, and everybody would. That's what's crazy about it, is that everybody would have, and they would be different. And it's just like how much knowledge, how much 
does one cat have that he's just got he's got that much to share around with everybody that he's come in contact with and everybody that he's played with it's just remarkable yeah and he was, he motivated everybody in different ways you know what i'm saying he he figured out what you know what could help uh, bring you more to the forefront he just always found ways to to keep you involved to keep you thinking to keep you on your toes and to and to keep you contributing so yeah that's uh yeah, that's a good point. Um, so listen, I, I I would love to keep you guys all night, but I know you guys got things to do. Mike, I know you probably got to uh, roost chickens and whatnot. Uh, <laughs> uh, listen. He's, he's out there catching one right now. He's right there. <laughs> Mike, right. I know you got oh, some Lord. chickens to catch. He's with you a part of the joke. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I want to say Morris turn off that light and go to bed. But <laughs> that was that was that was perfectly fit into what was going on. Uh, Morris, what is the 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 lineup for NPG on these few dates that you have coming up here? Well, in this corner, <laughs> we have the great. Tony M gonna be on rapping. Yes, on of course. Good talk. Yes. Tony, you still playing that guitar? Yeah, he's still chucking yes, the luck. Yes, sir. Chucking oh, luck. Yeah. Mike, 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 and I got some little, some little funky uh, things to pull together for everybody. So nice. Yeah. So when we got, of course, we got Lightning Mike Scott, uh, the, the good Reverend. Uh, he's gonna be in there. Uh, we got a cat named Brandon Commodore from In Condition. He's going to be sitting on the drums with us. Oh, uh, he, he's a bad man. We got uh, Sonny the Legendary, the, the alien from himself, uh, 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 Sonny T. And yeah. uh, we're going to have Kenny Holman, one of the horn heads. He's going to be uh, jamming with us. And uh, we got uh, Mac McKenzie. You know, we got Mac going to be uh, on these vocals, man. Of course, you got your boy. You got Mr. Hayes in the house. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be funky, man. It's a tight unit. But we're going to go get it, man. I think that it's going to be some good songs and it's going to be some good fun, man. And so we're looking forward to getting down there and doing the thing. We're going to have a couple of little surprises for you. Yeah. So it's going to be nice. all right. Yes. Uh, and it's going to be really cool, man. But uh, we're looking forward to it, man, and, 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 and seeing the people, man, uh, in, in cases where we can. And we're hoping that this, like I said, this COVID thing is bananas, man. Uh, you know, I don't think any of us could have imagined, you know, uh, I... This is the first time in over 20 years that I haven't been to Europe or in somewhere foreign in two years, man. I've been traveling like this since since the early 90s, like 1990, 91. You know what I'm saying? And and it's never been that span of time that I haven't left this country. And 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 and, and so it's bananas, man, and, and just play for the people. And so for anybody that thinks, man, we 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 love playing for the people. We want to play for the people. That's what we do. That's what we've always done. And so it's in our in our DNA. So of course we hope that, you know, COVID and, and you know, we can get a handle on this as a country and, and as as a as a planet, get a handle on this this pandemic. And you know, and no matter what side of the issue you fall on, whether you think it's phony or whatever the case is, I think it's I think it's a thing that everybody is is over it. Everybody's tired of it. Everybody's over oh, it. Yes. But we gotta we got to uh, do what we can to mitigate this 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 crazy time and do the best we can to get past it and and help each other get past it. So that's what we're trying to do, man. And, and, and until we can see each other on the road again and things get back to kind of like normal, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah, I absolutely agreed, man. Because I mean, and, and Mike, uh, man, I, I'm looking for I, I wish you guys were going to be in Atlanta. But, Mike, I, I know that you were just. I don't think I've ever been to a show where you were actually playing. It seems like every single show that I ever went to, you either weren't there or somebody was playing in your place. So I, I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna need to take a road trip and come and see you. Man, play. You, right. you should take a road trip because what I what I did is I ordered a Moses outfit for Mike so that he could. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got a. Like so I, so I can rock this rock this beard. <laughs> <laughs> that's the hey, excuse me, young man. Excuse me, Mr. Hayes. That's the that's the wisdom of my years, there, sir. That's right. Wisdom. That's right. I and forgot so more shit than your young ass will ever know. <laughs> hey, hey, hold on, but you know what? What's that? You know what Mike's gonna bring plenty of? 
Chicken grease. <laughs> hey, bro. <laughs> eggs. Eggs. <laughs> chicken eggs. Hey, chicken hey, grease. Little ch chicken <laughs> eggs. Hey, hey Levi. I learned, I, learned that, I learned that chicken grease from the best, my brother. Oh, that's all right. Thank you, man. I love you, Mike. I love you. Love you too, dog. That's great. But uh, yeah, I will. I will have some chicken eggs in my pocket, though. I have some okay. chicken eggs. Amen. <laughs> Gotta be careful. You can't be doing that dance that we just saw you doing with eggs in your pocket. That's not gonna. <laughs> uh, but I'm seeing like the girls like what? What's that in your pocket? What's coming what's that in your pocket? Did you get you get excited quick or the eggs in your pocket? <laughs> Scrambled. <laughs> two <laughs> two shows on September 30th at the Dakota Jazz Club. Is that still that still yeah. on? Yep. Yes, sir. It is. Two shows on the 30th, two shows on the 1st. Yep. I see yeah, them too. We, yep. And then we head to Cedar Rapids and then Chicago. Yeah. Cedar Rapids is October 2nd. And then uh, City Chicago. Winery is October 3rd. Mm -hmm. And all of them also have meet and greet onlys. Uh, you have well, you have meet and not only, but meet and greets that you can actually do for every single one of those shows. How do you guys, how do you guys feel about those uh, meet and greets? Or I mean, obviously it's good to kind of meet fans and stuff. But again, as we're talking about this pandemic, and you're kind of like, uh, I mean, obviously we're gonna have to go through some some protocol to, to you know some masking and because you know despite all of the the crazy that's going on, mask and social distance works. That's the bottom line. It, it, it works. And so we, we'll, we'll do what we can because, again, we don't want to make nobody sick. We don't want to get sick. So we want to just do what we can. But still, you know, we want the fans to experience, you know, uh, coming and, and hanging out with some of the people who work with Prince. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a very cool thing, you know, uh, uh, sometimes when, you, when, when, when fans, you know, they just said we, we, always, we never got a chance to catch a Prince show or see you guys in person and that sort of thing. So this is cool for that type of scenario where people can kind of get a flavor, like hanging out with the people. Cause man, I know there was people that in bands that I wish I could have had an opportunity to do meet and greet with some of the groups I used to go see back in the day when I, you know, you just go to concerts. That would have been amazing to me to talk to like some of the people I admired that played keys. And I could have asked them like, Hey man, how was it? What do you use? What is it like to do this? And so I think, you know, that's a cool thing to do, but we're going to try to do it as safely as possible and uh, and, and do something and, and, and as best as we can to like make it a, a cool experience, but at the same time, be safe with everybody. Yeah, it sounds. It definitely sounds like a, a good, safe idea. So you know, but we just my, my brother-in-law and I just went to a Michael Che concert, uh, comedian off of mm -hmm. Saturday Night Live. Yep. And there was a first show that I went to that they required us to actually have our vaccination cards and stuff like that. Are you guys going to go to that extent and, and require them to prove they've been vaccinated or uh, anything like that? Or are you leaving that up to the venues to decide? Yeah. Go ahead, Tony, if you got this. No, I, I, I think uh, the protocol right now, we're, we're kind of allowing the, the venues to uh, put those you know uh, things in place. We're not mandating anything. Um, I mean, even our, even the people who have to work at these venues, uh, the the people the employees the the bands that come in all have to be vaccinated they have to they have to sh show a proof of vaccination so I'm we're we're leaving it to the uh, to the venues and uh, uh, again as more cities we're trying to be as safe as we can and, and and still bringing that that legacy and sound to the fans right so so you guys heard it here that if you guys want to come and check out uh, Tony and check out Morris and check out mike you can absolutely do that at the shows and for new power new power generation you can go to newpowergeneration.net and again uh to recap they've got two shows they're doing september 30th uh at the dakota jazz cup in minneapolis they they're doing another two shows the following day on october 1st the same place the dakota jazz club which is a very very cool place to do it uh, then October 2nd they're going to go to Cedar Rapids Iowa the Alliant Energy Powerhouse and then on the 3rd at the City Winery in Chicago, Illinois. And so you can check out all that. Meanwhile, Mr. Levi, see, uh, Mr. Levi, see, sir. <laughs> Junior. <laughs> I can't remember what song it was, but there was a there was a jam session where all of you guys are are, are jamming and uh, and Prince is is getting the crowd to kind of get into what you're doing, and he keeps saying, Mr. Levi, see, sir. 
midst of the Abaja. <laughs> <laughs> and he is going to be playing with uh, a, a band called Purple Ones, and they've got a lot of shows that are happening in uh in california and so if you guys want to check out mr levi sees it it's going to be at uh it's going to be at purple ones.com that's uh I, and i try to remember all the dates on this uh i tried to pull up the website but uh, it, it just made my connection uh like mike's um <laughs> and i was trying to find yeah yeah, some dates have changed because of vaccination and stuff. But I mean, oh. everybody's in the same thing. We gotta, you know, play by the information that we're given. So, yeah, I think you got. I think next show that I I saw on the books. Well, there, there's there's a bunch of them that are coming up, but I think I, there's one that's on the 26th. Uh, that's a yeah. City Brisbane concerts in the park. So just go to purple.com and check out those dates. I'm sure they'll update those and whatnot. If you want to see Mr. Levi Cesar Jr. <laughs> and, uh, man, gentlemen, I can't even oh, I can't tell you how honored I am to have you guys all on here and to kind of uh, talk about the MPG days and, and everything that, you know, Prince had envisioned and that you guys are blessed enough to be a part of that vision as well. So thank you guys so, so much for joining us tonight. I can't I can't thank you enough. Thank you guys so, so much. Yeah, thank, thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Y'all be safe. Together, helping uh, Mr. Christopher pull this together. So just thanking the people on the backgrounds also. Thank you, fellas. Word up. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Thank you guys so, so much. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Need the, the crowd clapping, the cheering. Yeah, that was actually. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was trying to get to, but unfortunately, I used this uh, unpaid app, and it it went through a Zaxby's app. More chicken. Chicken place. More chicken. More chicken. What's your name for the show? The Chicken Show. <laughs> Popeyes, man. Popeyes. <laughs> yes, Popeyes. I'm going to have it. Oh, <laughs> but when you get a chance, cook? man, you got to go to JJ. Hey, uh, Levi. Yes, sir. Mo. Yeah. I need yeah. them questions. I need them questions. <laughs> Wait, say, say it again. Question. It broke up. All right, here you go. Um, who in no, the house no, knows no, Dr. No, Quake? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Who turned the mother out? <laughs> hey, right, Mike, bro. before I go, what the cluck? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get that when you get home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. All right, man. All right. <laughs> All right. All right, Thanks, everybody. Guys. Okay. Oh, man. Uh, what a show, guys. It was fun. Mike is frozen, so we'll uh, we'll let him uh, – we'll, we'll remove my – There he uh, goes. Uh, my, my internet connection has just been – is just horrendous right now. Trailing at two. Yes, I guess so. And I'm actually in a house. <laughs> uh, I don't know what's happening here.